Have you talked to David yet? I'm wondering when you guys are going to sign the divorce papers. For your information, David is refusing to talk to me. He hasn't come home since he started staying over at your house. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just talk to him soon, okay? You talk to him. He's at your house, so it should be easy enough. Well, if you don't finalize the divorce soon, it's gonna hold everything up. You know that, right? Like I said, talk to him. I really can't stand being stuck in this limbo either. Having the person I thought was my best friend double-cross me and sleep with my own husband. Then waiting aimlessly to discuss what comes next? Believe me, this sucks. Don't forget, you're the one who's in the wrong, though. I'm the one in the wrong? Hmm. The person who was a faithfully married and supportive wife or the person who cheated with their best friend's husband. Any way you slice it, you're in the wrong, sweetheart. I heard everything from David, Liz. Before you two got married, you did everything for him and always acted all cutesy and nice. Then, after getting married, you changed and became all controlling. It was a complete shock to him. He told me everything. Getting married comes with all sorts of responsibilities. It's only natural for things to change. All I did was set up some basic rules for us to follow, for our future. You can't just force someone to follow your rules against their will. I never forced him to do anything. David and I discussed everything before we even got married. Anyway, I doubt that you even care to hear all this. If you want the divorce to go through, get David to come back here and talk to me directly. That's where it has to start. You always did have a temper, didn't you? Huh, you're just like a kid. Honestly, I don't have the energy to be angry anymore. I'm just getting tired of the whole situation. Fine, whatever. I'll tell David to go back and discuss the divorce details with you. As soon as you sign those divorce papers, the sooner you can let David be free. You say that as if I'm the bad guy? Like I'm holding him captive or something. Well, you are the bad guy, aren't you? David told me that the time he spent with you was incredibly painful for him. That's why he ended up choosing me. Our time spent together was painful? To make your own husband feel that way after two years of marriage. That really makes me think you aren't fit for marriage after all. Stealing their best friend's husband after they have been married for two years and then just sitting there like they've done nothing wrong? That sounds to me like someone really well suited for marriage. Whatever. At the end of the day, David and I are going to live happily together after this, while you're just going to be bitter and alone. Save your spiteful comments for someone else. Listen, I know that you two are having an affair, and I understand why you're pushing for a divorce. I want to discuss that as much as you do. But you have to let me know one thing at least. When did you start seeing him? Well, I guess it started at your wedding. I couldn't stop thinking about how hot he looked in that tuxedo. Then, after you guys got back from your honeymoon, we did coffee at your place. Do you remember? He happened to be there that day, and while you were in the kitchen making the coffee, we started chatting in the living room and really hit it off. After that, we exchanged contact information so that we could get in touch. After our honeymoon? It started that far back! Then, we started meeting up after work for dinner almost every other week. That continued for a while as we got to know each other. By then, it had been about six months. Yeah, six months after we met at your house, we started officially dating, I guess. <laughs> so basically, you were cheating with him throughout our entire marriage. I guess you could say it that way. He was spending almost the same amount of time with you as he was with me. Apparently. Anyway, Liz, you've got to realize I'm almost 30. I can't wait all day for this divorce to go through. There's a lot of things I need to do before it gets too late. I was always planning to get married by 25, and that didn't work out. I've really got to step on the gas. Anyways, I'll talk to David. David, you need to come and talk to me. We need to resolve this divorce situation. Finally, you came around to the idea of divorce, eh? Did Shelly say something to you? 
Actually, I was going to talk to you to decide if divorce was the best option, but I just talked to Shelly and that convinced me. There's no other option than going through with the divorce. When you come back, we can start discussing the conditions. All right, I'll come back then. Just get the divorce papers ready, okay? I'll just have to sign them and we're done. Not so fast. We need to talk about dividing our assets, mainly the car. It's gonna take time to decide all of those things. I can't be dealing with all the trouble of dividing the assets, Liz. I don't have time for that. I'm not gonna be caught up in a complicated divorce that just drags on forever. Shelly's been waiting to get married, so we've gotta get this divorce over with quickly and move on. David, I don't think you realize where you stand in this situation. There you go on one of your power trips again. Not this time, Liz. Times like this are exactly the reason why I left you for Shelly. Yeah, you're one to talk. I heard you asked for her phone number right after we got married. Right from the beginning, you already had your eyes on other women. There's nothing I could have done. She was like, way more attractive than you. <laughs> If you're a guy, it's impossible not to ask for the digits of a hot girl like that. Actually, it would be rude not to ask. What world are you living in where asking out your wife's friend is considered good manners? Never mind. All I'm focused on now is marrying Shelly and starting an actually happy marriage with her. So our marriage was that unhappy for you, was it? You couldn't stand me calling you out for not following the rules that we decided? As a wife, you have to follow basic rules, too. You need to follow your husband and always be ready in case he needs anything. Are you kidding me? Don't you know that getting married is a partnership? Both people are supposed to be on equal footing and respect each other. That's why I wanted to hash it out with you like two married adults before we went through with this divorce. Oh, and why don't we also talk about what we are going to do with the car while we're at it? I already told you, you're not going to force me to discuss that. I'm not forcing you to decide anything, but we need to at least discuss it. These are important decisions, David. And let me just remind you that you were the one who cheated and destroyed this whole marriage. What gives you the right to make these demands about how things should go? I'm not just going to give in to all your conditions that easily. Fine, just get a lawyer then. Why is the first thing women always do is go straight to a lawyer? I can see it already. You and some divorce attorney ganging up and taking everything. The issue is between you and me, Liz. No one else. That's why I'm just going to sign the divorce papers and be done with it. I'm not going to hire a lawyer. Fine. Then I'll head over there now. But meeting just the two of us might not be the best idea. Having a third party to oversee the discussions would make sure everything is fair. Well then, Shelly can moderate. You keep going on about cheating this, a fair that. What I and Shelly have is real. It's not some overnight fling. Yeah, I'm sure it is. Honestly, I don't really care. Why don't we get one of your family members to stand in? My family? Like my mom or dad? Sure, that's fine with me. <laughs> Whatever I say, my mom or dad would just take my side and agree with me. So, yeah, I'd be fine with one of them as a moderator. Well, seeing as it's not possible to have them come at such short notice, why don't just the two of us meet up to sign the papers first? Yeah, yeah, whatever. We both want to get this divorce finalized, so let's finish up with the papers first. Then we can sort out everything else later. That's fine with you? God, you're persistent. I said it was okay, didn't I? All right, then. I'll prepare the paperwork and have it ready for when you arrive. Liz, thanks for getting all that messy divorce business over with. Now that that's done, David and I are going to register our marriage at the city hall today. That means we will be officially married. Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> We are thinking about having the wedding soon, but I may wait a bit just so I make sure everything is perfect. Congrats. That's fast, isn't it? I only just submitted the divorce papers yesterday. Well, did you know that yesterday was actually Friday the 13th? Spooky, right? 
We originally wanted to sign the marriage papers yesterday, but we thought it would be bad luck to do it then, so we chose today instead. That way we can start our married life off on a positive note. <laughs> um, okay. We haven't set the date yet, but we're definitely going to have a huge wedding. I'll be sure to send you an invitation too. <laughs> I'm gonna go all out and order a custom-made dress from France. I've already picked out the design. Remember how your dress was kind of... Uh, frumpy? Yeah, mine is not gonna be like that. <laughs> it's gonna be way more gorgeous. Also, we're thinking of having the wedding in a vineyard outside of town. Then probably doing the honeymoon in Hawaii. Oh, Liz, it's gonna be amazing! Thanks for the invitation, but after this divorce is settled, I don't want to have any association with you or David anymore. I don't want to hear about your dream wedding, your dress, anything. I'm good. But I have to at least tell you about our plans after the wedding. I said I don't want to hear anymore. Oh, but we're thinking of building a house. At first, we were just going to buy, but with the price of real estate these days, it makes more sense to just hire a contractor. Besides, my dream home needs to be perfect, with a big yard and a back patio like I've always wanted. It's going to be amazing to have a place of our own to raise our kids, get a dog, have barbecues with friends, you name it. I'm thinking around 2,500 square feet most likely, with me and David's room on the top floor, then the kids' rooms and the guest room on the first floor. You are welcome to stay anytime. <laughs> Not that I care, but... Is all that true? You're really building a house. That's right! We're actually planning to start work on the house right after the wedding. We're actually just in the car heading to see some model homes at this very moment. You're in the car? Yeah, we just had French and are heading there now. Hold on. Is that a rental car? What do you mean? It's David's car. <laughs> David's car? That's my car! What is he thinking? We haven't even talked about splitting up the assets. Including that car. You don't need to be so greedy. Anyway, you guys are gonna talk about these things soon, right? After we get married, David and I are gonna need a car, so I think we should have this one. Then you can take the furniture and appliances. That's fair, right? I'm not going to discuss this with you. That's for me and him to decide. You're gonna want him to pay alimony, aren't you? After checking online, I found out that a spouse who was married for only two years has far lower necessary payments. He shouldn't expect to receive that much. Did you research this? Obviously. If David and I are going to build a house, we're going to have to plan all of the costs out ahead of time. If David has to pay alimony, how is he expecting to pay for this house? We're going to take out a loan. A loan? You don't know what a loan is? Well, it's when you borrow money from the bank and then pay interest on the amount you borrowed. Oh, you probably don't know what interest is either. You really do lack common sense on these sorts of things, don't you? That must be why David dumped you. <laughs> I'm not stupid. I know what a loan is. Yeah, well, we will get a loan for the house, then start building after that. Since we have a car, building somewhere a bit outside of town should be fine. We're thinking maybe even near the countryside. Besides, property value is cheaper out there, so we could scoop up a property for 500000 or so. What kind of bank is just going to hand you that kind of money? David's got it covered. He said we just need to pay a little bit more than our current rent and we'll be good to go. Basically, it's life on easy mode. <laughs> oh, sorry, I better go. We just arrived at the housing complex. There are so many cool houses here. I can't wait to check them out. See ya. Hey, Liz. David is heading over to your place now. When you're talking to David about dividing the assets in the alimony settlement, try to be considerate, okay? Considerate? David's been through a lot, especially after your guy's marriage fell through. Not to mention, we found a really nice house when we were touring model homes the other day. With the loan that David is securing, it looks like we are pretty close to making that dream a reality. We wouldn't want any wrenches thrown into that plan. 
Oh, don't worry. We will invite you to the housewarming. So, you think a guy without a job can secure funding to build a house? A guy without a job? Who are you talking about? It should be obvious. I'm talking about David. Why would you say something so stupid? I know for a fact David works full time. I see him heading out the door to work every morning. He's not only unemployed, but he's in some serious debt. Debt? Actually, I just found out about the debt recently myself. It turns out he was hiding it from me. The interest just kept piling up over the last couple years to such an extent that his credit score is totally in the red. In his situation, securing a loan from any reputable money lending service is basically impossible. Even still now, it seems like the interest is still adding up with each passing month. Hold on! Why haven't I heard anything about this? If you knew all this time, why didn't you say anything about it? Like I said, I just found out. He was hiding it from me as well. Wait a minute. So he got in all this debt and is now unemployed? How does that work? I better explain everything from the beginning, because I'm pretty sure David is not going to tell you. At least he didn't when he was married to me. Give me the cold hard facts, Liz. I need to hear this. Well, apparently, it all started before David and I were married. You see, his family's company was struggling. Even up to that point, they had been relying on loans just to scrape by and had debt mounting up already. David worked as a bicycle delivery person to try and help out his family, but it was in vain. The company had already reached a point of no return. At that point, the smart move would have been to declare bankruptcy, but David kept borrowing more money just to cover the losses and keep his family's business afloat. So you're saying he helped his family's company get back on their feet? That's good, right? He certainly tried, but the company was already in too deep. His parents actually did fill out the paperwork and were prepared to file for bankruptcy, but David just continued borrowing money stubbornly with no realistic view of the whole situation. If that's not enough, when he got married to me, he paid for the whole wedding, the honeymoon, everything, with borrowed money. No way! How much debt does he actually have? From my understanding, it's somewhere in the ballpark of $200,000. 200 thousand what then when the timing couldn't be worse david was fired from his job right after we got married leaving him unemployed are you serious that kind of debt and unemployed so after we got married i had to set ground rules for him to follow like helping out around the house and going to the unemployment agency to look for leads on jobs don't forget we were living entirely off of my income and I needed him to get his act together if we were going to make our marriage work. That's what he meant by controlling. It was all for his own good. To think that even after I lectured him again and again, he still didn't go out and look for jobs, or even lift a finger around the house. So when he started talking to you, he didn't have to hear constant prodding every day from me to get a job. He could just forget about everything and escape reality for a while. Little did you know... But why didn't he declare bankruptcy after he lost his job? That would have been a way to forgive the debt, right? I think if he did that, it would all be waived and he'd be fine, right? Declaring bankruptcy wouldn't allow him to pay for a new house outright in cash, would it? He wouldn't even be able to use credit cards in that case. Wait, he wouldn't be able to use a credit card? No, they would be cut off. But you know what, Shelly? The card that he has been using this whole time is actually mine. It was meant to be a shared card between us when we were married. But unfortunately for you and David, the free ride ends today. He's been using your card? What do you mean by the free ride ends today? What are you going to do, Liz? There's no reason for a guy that deep in debt and without a job to even have a credit card, is there? Wait. So the card he has been using to pay for our dates is... My card. That's right. At first, I noticed that some of my statements were a lot higher than usual. Fine. It's because I use my credit card to pay for everything these days. Bills, gas, different expenses, whatever. But I wanted to take a closer look, so I pulled up the breakdown of all the details on my online account. It was funny, actually. 
A $150 at Bella Luigi? A two-day stay at the Emerald Bay Hotel? A diamond pendant from Tiffany's? That credit card was in my name, and I had been paying the statements that whole time unaware of it. You paid for all of that? That's why I'm going to have to demand that every cent is paid back in alimony payments, starting as soon as the divorce settlement is finalized. I've already got a lawyer working on the case to make sure that happens. Oh, and I'm going to need that car back as well, seeing as it was bought using a loan made in my name. You can take the car! Without that, there's no way we can drive out to the house we're building outside the city! There's gotta be another way! Sorry to burst your bubble, honey, but you should probably just forget about your dream house idea. That is, of course, unless you take out another loan in your name. I suppose you could do that? There's no way I could afford that! Besides, after making plans to get married to David, I quit my job! He told me his salary could cover the both of us and that I could spend time at home working on the interior decorating and making meals and such. No, really? This is too good! Two unemployed lovebirds. What are we supposed to do now? That's none of my concern, sweetheart. No matter how you look at it, you and David brought this all upon yourselves. So it's within my right to ask that he pays alimony, down to every cent that was spent using my credit card. Liz, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for it to turn out like this. There's no way David can pay all that back. Especially how he's already 200000 in debt. He doesn't have a job. I don't have a job. How are we supposed to live? If you don't think David will be able to pay himself, you could help by chipping in yourself. I know it's David who has to pay all of it, but, like, you guys are married, right? Oh, and if anything is unclear or you have any questions, a lawyer will be contacting you shortly. Please, Liz, let's think about this. I'm begging you. When you're in trouble, I'll help you out. You can ask me for anything and I'll do it. We're childhood friends, after all. Yeah, we used to be friends. Thanks for the kind offer, but I've got other people I can turn to. People I can actually trust. Besides, I wouldn't want to disrupt you and David's first year of marriage. The two of you will have lots of time to think about your dream future together. <laughs> Bye. Wait, Liz! Wait! David, where are you? I'm here with a representative who is going to help us with our discussion. I've got the divorce papers ready, too. Give me a few minutes. I just dumped at the gas station to grab a quick coffee. <laughs> oh yeah, who did you call? My mom? My dad? You didn't get Uncle Rick, did you? <laughs> I am actually sitting with your older sister at this moment. My older sister? You mean Kim? Right. And as I'm sure you are probably aware, she is a lawyer. I thought she would be the best choice to help us settle this fairly. Liz, how is that fair? You know that Kim has it out for me. She cut ties with us years ago and I haven't spoken with her since. Neither has my mom or dad. You told me you wouldn't hire a lawyer. Then you go and do this? What the hell, Liz? Oh, I didn't hire anyone. After I explained the situation to her, Kim was more than happy to step up and help. Totally pro bono. What a kind gesture, right? This is so messed up. Lawyers like your sister don't have time to waste, so hurry over here and we can start the discussion. If you don't get here soon, we will have to start the negotiations without you. It's quite impressive how much your sister knows about divorce laws. We're very lucky to have her. This is so unfair. She's totally going to take your side in this whole thing. It would appear that way, yes. You knew she hated me. That's exactly why you called her, isn't it? This is unethical. It's immoral. You're just a terrible person, Liz. Oh, so I'm the one who's the terrible person? That's rich. You. You're the one who didn't utter a word about a mountain of debt while it piled up. All the way to 200,000. 200! You're the one who wouldn't look for a job and lived off my income all the while cheating with my best friend while driving all around town in the car that I paid for. 
Oh, and how can I forget how you wouldn't even talk about paying alimony or dividing our assets? Just wanting to sign the divorce papers and run off with your new wife? You thought you could just skate through life without ever having to take responsibility or pay consequences for your actions. You're a lowlife, David. Fine, fine, but... About the car. I actually needed that to look for work. Going to interviews and that. You knew full well that I bought that car and the deed is in my name. There's no excuse. When we bought it, I told you we could have put it in my name. Anyway, what I'm going to need you to do is start paying alimony payments. I've calculated the amount needed to pay back the credit card bill, as well as some regular settlement fees, etc. Your sister will be able to explain how everything works. Oh, and I'm going to need the car back by, um, immediately. Does that work okay for you? Liz, please reconsider. If you do this, I'll have nothing. Nothing? You'll have your new wife and that debt of yours, won't you? You may think you've hit total rock bottom now, but you're going to be really living in hell when everything comes back to bite you. This is all because you're angry, isn't it? This is some elaborate plan to get revenge, right? No, I'm not angry at all. All I'm doing is exercising my right to a fair settlement, in a calm and composed manner. Your sister and I are waiting for you, David. Oh, and make sure you drive here carefully. We wouldn't want my car to get scratched on the way over. Liz, wait. Just tell my sister to leave, okay? We don't need her there. This is between us, right? Liz, are you there? Kim's always had it out for me, from the beginning! Thanks to the services of David's sister, I was able to negotiate an alimony settlement that would cover all of the losses over the last year, including the thousands of dollars that David had spent using my credit card. Thankfully, the car was also returned scratch-free, and is sitting in my garage at this very moment. Unfortunately for David and Shelly, their dream future wilted and they split up after only a month together. Shelly actually returned to the job she had quit just a couple months earlier, which must have been a very awkward meeting with her boss. But luckily for her, they took her back in. After the settlement, I lost contact with David's sister Kim, but I'll always be thankful to her for her help. As for my ex-husband, David, I haven't the faintest idea of what happened with him. However, as long as the alimony payments keep coming in, I'm not too troubled about it.